we're just kind of sick of all the name count, calling and blame game that's going on. So. The city of Chicago has had enough of that. We don't need that. Chicago is used to with that. Yeah, used to snow? Yes. Okay. I'm going to go in the house and have a taste and uh, probably make a little love. Now that's cabin fever at its finest. This week will go down in history in many ways as Governor Quinn signed the law approving civil unions. Mayoral candidate Carol Mosley Braun lost her cool inside a church building, later giving an ambiguous apology. And the blizzard of 2011 has affected every Chicagoan, regardless of political affiliation and lifestyle. Also tonight, we ask mayoral candidate Dr. Patricia Van Pelt Watkins, why are you running for mayor. Snowstorms and politics, I want your phone calls tonight. This is Off 63rd Chicago, from the beach to the birds. Chicago. Welcome to Off 63rd Chicago from the beach to the burbs. Our WKKC listeners and host Harold Lee Rush have us in simulcast on 89.3 FM and www.wkkc.fm. Your opinion counts tonight. Call me 773-487-3630. That's right. You can call us right now at 773-487-3630. Let's talk about the news of the week. The blizzard of 2011 has hit, causing school and business closings. Our beloved Lakeshore Drive was closed due to heavy snow and spinouts. But if there was no snowstorm this week, we would have been talking about what? Governor Quinn's signing of civil unions legislation and the number of YouTube hits on the exchange between two mayoral candidates. Later in the show, mayoral candidate Dr. Patricia Van Pelt Watkins will be in the forum, but joining us right now for a spirited discussion on the blizzard, civil unions, and the mayoral campaign is the host of Emily and Friends on the Talk of Chicago, WVON 1690, the incomparable Emily <laughs> McKendall. How you doing? Emily, Sarah? how are you this evening? I'm wonderful. Thanks so much for braving the cold weather and the snow tonight. We really appreciate you. Emily, let's get right into this. Let's talk about Governor Quinn and the signing of legislation. Civil unions in Illinois now. What do you think? Good move, bad move? Political. Great move. Great, why? But before I get into that, I just want to congratulate you on your new show, Off 63rd. I think this is the bomb, and you're well deserving Thank of this, you. Gerard. Appreciate but that. speaking on Governor Quinn and why I think it's a great move, I think it's because love is where you find it. And who's to say? Who's to sit in judgment of who can be together and who cannot? And clearly, this is a move toward health care. You know, now a partner can be there with the person. I think it's a great move. I think love is clearly where you find it. So you see Governor Quinn totally going against those who may be far right wing religious Bible toters who say, no, this shouldn't happen at any cost. And, and who are they to say? You know, that's the only thing I'm saying. Who's to say what is wrong? We live in a very progressive society, and we have to keep up with the times. And there was a time where two people would have to hide that. Now it's saying we can celebrate it, and I think that's what's more important than anything. Emily, is this a political move, or is this Governor Quinn's actual ethic of care? What I, do you think? I mean, is this just straight up politics? I got to sign this particular legislation because of I'm gay sure some of that is a part of it, but deep down inside, I think he believed it was the right thing to do. I don't think anybody's going to sign anything if they are just totally against it. If they don't believe in it, I don't think that they would sign it. And I think it's a right move for everyone. And those who have issues with it religiously, then I think Governor Quinn has to answer for that. You know what I'm saying? Or the people who are involved in the dual relationship has to answer for that. Who are we to sit in judgment? Let's look at some of his quotes here. Governor Quinn says, this is a day of history. And he goes on to say, we believe in civil rights and we believe in civil unions. It is a day of history. It's like the president being elected, first black president. That's a day of history, just like stopping the, the gays can openly serve in the military now. A day of history. So yes, it's a day of history. Okay, so Emily, you're agreeing with what Governor Quinn Absolutely. has done Absolutely. in terms of civil unions, but what about gay or lesbian marriage? Uh, do you think that that is in the 
not so distant future for Illinois. There's a few other states where you can get where married. Where you can get married. And I think that that's something he has to look at, again, what is best for the state and what is best for its people because the people make up the state. So, again, I'm not against it. I believe in if this is what really gets you through the day, if this is what makes you a better person, I'd rather that happen for you than you go out there and do something crazy. You know what? <laughs> Let's talk about benefits and the overall aspect of respecting partners and relationships. I do want to give the phone number once more. 773-487-3630 is the number. you got to give us a call right now. 773-487-3630. Lobbies for gays and lesbians. Mm -hmm. Do you think that lobbies and individuals were the key in making sure that this legislation Oh, takes absolutely. Place. Absolutely. They have to do it. I mean, the same way we brought everything to the fore, nothing changes without an uprising of some sort on what level. You do you know what I'm saying? So it doesn't matter. It's somebody had to make the noise to bring it to the attention to get it done. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that word, the noise. <laughs> the noise. Bring the noise, as public enemy would say. You know what's interesting about that is the squeaky wheel does get the oil. Absolutely. And the crying baby, as Malcolm X said, gets fed. Right. And so often we see, I mean, we're seeing it in Egypt now. Absolutely. We're seeing it here as well, where if you have a strong lobby, if you've got a a strong blog site, yes. you can get some things, you can affect change in a legislative body. Absolutely. Let's look, let, we're going to shift gears here. Okay. The blizzard this week. <laughs> <laughs> Did the city of Chicago handle this storm in an effective manner? We're looking at a lame duck mayor here, and Lakeshore Drive was shut down. What, what's going on, Emily? I think that was horrible. That being said, X Lakeshore Drive, I do think the city held its own in cleanup because we're back mobile today. There's a lot of cities that are not mobile after the next day of such a huge <laughs> snowstorm. And I tell you, I had to see for myself yesterday. So I wanted the brave, adventurous ones. I actually got in my truck and started driving around see, just to see. See, <laughs> you're the kind of person that doesn't belong on the streets because they say, stay off the streets. They did say that. Yeah, you know, stay off of Lakeshore but I Drive. To, I just wanted to monitor the city for the other folks to see if everybody was doing what they were doing. You were being a journalist. <laughs> I was being a journalist. I love that. You know what, Emily? When the spin out started to occur on Lakeshore mm -hmm. Drive, I became concerned because everyone knew about this thunderstorm about 10 days ago. Absolutely. Pe people knew. Absolutely. We, we got fair warning from Absolutely. all of our meteorologists here. Absolutely. And people were still crowding the, uh, the Dan Ryan, the Kennedy, Lakeshore Drive. And, and so I, this is my suggestion. I really wished that they would have rerouted traffic off of Lakeshore Drive onto somewhere else. The somewhere else, maybe that would have made even more congestion. Well, I totally but, agree. But, but, but it, it would have given the truck drivers a chance to salt the street and to keep the blades down, Emily. I, I, mean, I agree with you. I, you get no argument from me because... First of all, you're right. We knew that this storm was coming if people were going to the store, stocking up the whole nine yards. And so for you not to shut down Lakeshore Drive, people were trying to take the fastest route home. Yeah. So if you lived on that area, if you live east, you were going to take Lakeshore Drive thinking that, let me get here. People left work early to get home to beat the storm and they still had to sit out there. Some I heard Red won't well, there as long as 12 hours. You know, no yeah. heat, cars are running out Battery. of gas. Now they're towing all the cars. At whose expense is my question. You know, you, this is <laughs> and it's, it's at the customer or it's at the driver's expense. Is it really? Yeah, I think so. Ugh, that's terrible. I think so. That's Emily, horrible. let's look at this, this whole fiasco. And, and I want to give the city of Chicago its props. It could have been much worse. I it it really could have been. I agree. It could have been a Mayor Balandic situation. <laughs> now, if this weren't in election year, do you think that there would have been more blame on the current mayor if, if oh, Daley wouldn't have stepped no. down? Actually, to be honest with you, Gerard, I think the city did a great job because one of the things I kept telling people, they was like, oh, the storm, I was like, this is Chicago. We don't shut down Chicago. For us to even be shut down, 
from Tuesday through yesterday was surprising to me because we we are mobile. Our city knows how to help. We do snow. <laughs> we are mobile. We're we Chicago. Do snow. We do We're snow. city of big shoulders and we do That's snow. It. Emily, let's take a phone call. We're going to talk with Pam. Pam, thanks for calling off 63rd. Pam, what's your comment? I really think the mayor should have did like he did for 9-11 and had the city evacuate. A lot of employers would not let employees off work. Therefore, they were in traffic trying to go home at 3 o'clock at the height of the storm. Hmm. This is interesting. What, not, thank, thank you so much, Pam. Emily, what do you think? Height of the storm? But that Pam wasn't has a, city. That wasn't city. That was the boss. The boss didn't let them go home in time. A lot of bosses did let their staff go home. So you can't blame the city yeah. for the employer. It's 20. 20 inches. Anytime you're getting two to three inches per hour, I mean, come on. You can't do it. You're absolutely <laughs> right. We've got to switch gears here, Emily. We've got to talk about this mayoral election. Before we go there, though, let's go back to phone lines. I've got another phone call. Thanks for calling. Off 63rd, what's your comment? Yes, I think they did a good job, but I'd like to say I was stranded in a blizzard 12 years ago in Tennessee, and the key is taking the traffic off the road if they can't travel. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you so much for your call. Agree, Emily? I agree. I totally agree with her. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure that blizzard in Tennessee wasn't quite as bad <laughs> as, as it, it is was. here. They can't drive down south. <laughs> oh, I'm not going there. It's the truth. They cannot drive. You know, you get one inch of rain and people spin it well, out. And that's why I'm saying we're in Chicago. We, we are shy town. We are. Emily, the mayoral election. Let's get into this. Carol Mosley Braun mm -hmm. and Patricia Van Pelt Watkins have an exchange. Yes. Watkins says that Braun has been missing in action when it comes to politics in Chicago. Yes. Braun defends herself and goes on offense by saying the, the, the quote about the, the narcotics. Mm -hmm. What in God's name is going on, Emily McKendall? Well, I mean, should... <laughs> here's, here's my issue with the whole thing. Nobody pays attention to why Rahm is not taking part in the debates. And the reason they're not letting Rahm in the debates is because they're afraid of his volatile temper. Mm -hmm. They don't want him to do or say anything that might be um, misconstrued, looked at. So when you get Patricia and Van Pelt Watkins and Carol Mosley Braun in the room, there's emotions that are flying. Okay, so you're referring to the debates, not the ones that are televised, but the ones that are held in community right. offices I mean, and he, churches, et cetera. Right, and Rahm Emanuel even this push breakfast. He wouldn't even participate in the debates at push breakfast. He wasn't at Trinity. He didn't show up at the debate where I moderated at Corliss High School on the South Side. Right. So he's avoiding these on purpose. You think the press has a responsibility? Not the well, I think it's his people that are stopping him from participating in the debates because we all know and is and his about his reputation of being one, a bully, and two, having a volatile uh, temper. Mm. So I believe that he is not participating in these debates and nobody's paying attention to it simply because they don't want him quote unquote going off the handle. Mm. So when you have uh, Patricia Van Pelt Watkins and Carol Mosley Braun in the room, those emotions did fly. I mean, how many of us get into arguments yeah. and when you're hit, you're coming, you're coming out swinging. So I think Carol probably resents it or, or regrets it a lot. Mm -hmm. But I can understand the emotion that was flying in the room at you the You know time. what, Emily, and you're absolutely right. We can all say what we would have done. Right. But, but if you're not in the moment, you it's can't. A, it's a moment thing. That's right. And I do like the fact that uh, Carol Mosley Braun came out and apologized. Oh, and it she was, owed her it apology. was a very apology. ambiguous apology, though. Ho, ho, ho tight, Emily. I got a phone call okay. to take. We're talking <laughs> civil unions. We're talking the snowstorm. We're talking the election. Okay. I'm going to go to Albert. Albert, you want to talk about civil unions? Albert, thanks for calling off 63rd. Yeah. What's your comment, Albert? Hi. Uh, well, congratulations on your new show. Thank you. Uh, but I just wanted to bring to, your, to the audience's attention that uh, there, when you talk about uh, the gay constituency, it does include black gay men and women. Mm -hmm. And that that constituency um, also made noise and that this is not, we are not the other, we're part of the community too. Mm. Um, and we do believe in civil unions and gay marriage. So, you know what, Albert, let me ask you this. Do you believe that African-American gay population is ignored when it comes to lobbies? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying that the, uh, the uh, mainstream black population ignores the, uh, its own gay constituency <laughs> and that uh, the black population looks at 
uh, gay issues as um, a white constituency, and it's not. Hmm. It's a mixture of different uh, ethnic groups, um, and it's a larger constituency than is portrayed to be within our black media. Interesting.